country has turned into a police state. All this when fewer than 1,200 residents have died from COVID. Tracking of citizens. Coronavirus has turned the land down under upside down. Australia used to be known for its fierce individualism and defense of personal freedoms. Well, now lockdowns, intense tracking of citizens have people claiming the country has turned into a police state. All this when fewer than 1,200 residents have died from COVID in a nation of 25 million. Dale. Police state. I mean, they had police. I know that. Heard has the story. In an now viral tweet, an Australian posted what they said is a view of the world's largest prison from space. A map of Australia. Australia is still a democracy, but its COVID restrictions are severe. It's like, okay, here's, the, it's like, this is the largest prison from space. Like, you know, where I am, you know, could be considered a cell, but a cell is all a matter of perspective. You know, it's, I love being at home. So quarantine time here in the States was no different from me. Uh, that lifestyle. I thought people would enjoy it longer. You know, I've enjoyed this lifestyle for like over five years now. So the fact that people couldn't get it really through like one whole year without just feeling the drag, I don't know, like I said, but just the largest police, the largest prison, uh, you know, from space, it's just like, Australians, if, if you feel like being at home for just this quarantine period until your country officials figure things out is a prison, then I understand that, but I mean, there's something bigger that you guys just got to understand. So before I go into that, let's just finish this. It's hard to enter or leave the country unless you're a politician or a celebrity. Citizens are tracked with apps and soon by facial recognition. In some states, you have to have your phone scanned before entering a church. And some have been arrested for simply posting on social media about protest against COVID restrictions. The rest of the world is starting to... Now that's different. And this is where, like, you know, my understanding of the history of Australia is just like, yeah, this was the country where the British Empire's prisoners were just sent. So yeah, the largest prison from space like i guess that would be a reference to that but this um like going after you know people who are posting facebook comments are being arrested you know like this is how serious things have gotten in america we're going after parents of these masters which i totally feel that is justified like I'm sick of putting these kids and just throwing away their lives and just watching their parents just not being parents and then yeah with Ethan Crumbly it's just so again Australians just think about the context of just what this virus has just done to everybody in the world and it's just like you guys weren't the only ones who felt like this but now it's a different story. So if you guys are just really upset about how deep they're going after you, just in your right to freedom of speech. Again, I made a video where, yes, you have the right to say whatever you want. But my father told me, you have to watch out for three tips. Uh, you know, the tip of your tongue, the tip of your pen. And I guess this last one is just for boys but you know the tip of your you know so essentially just you know watch who you sleep with 
watch the contracts and agreements that you sign your name to or your word to. And especially watch the tip of your tongue. You've got to watch what you say. You know, yeah, we have the right to just say anything you want. But this was like a business scenario where he was just giving me advice. Yeah, I know you like to talk, son, and you're very good at talking. People like you. But in the world of corporate business, you have to not forfeit those rights, but you have to use that right more responsibly. And because here in America, we just can't have that right taken away like this, or we didn't have that right taken away like this, but now it's happening. And it's because of things like this. People just are not being mindful, conscious, or even like human in some of these comments that just, they still post, still post and fail to connect the dots that they are part of just a bigger picture that is relying on them to not focus on the big picture that's just like around them. Does that make sense? So again, Australians like, yeah, this sucks, but you have to understand like it's our fault, Americans fault probably especially because yeah, if we were more responsible than you are, you know, brother or sister state, you know, like you guys wouldn't be in this situation. But again, again, this is just something we in our generation, my generation at least, have just never been through anything like this. Um, there's just probably barely a few generations or even people in those generations left who survived who can probably recall another situation like this. But again, this is all new to us, new to, you know, like, so you gotta, this is the learning curve. This is baseline. So again, ask if Australia can still be called a free country. <laughs> Australia's lockdown has been so draconian. It's brought comparisons on social media to how Australia. I mean, this is again, word choice. So I don't know. I haven't gone back. Russell, if you can maybe answer this for me. Was it always just right to lockdown or was there just quarantine, you know, face and the people of Australia were just like, screw that. We don't need to quarantine. So again, I know I haven't done the research behind that here. Just full transparency began as a prison colony. This pregnant Australian mother was handcuffed and hauled away by cops in front of her children for simply posting on Facebook about a lockdown protest. The charge was incitement. What on earth? Excuse me, what, what on earth? Define incitement. Here's the definition of incitement. The action of provoking unlawful behavior or urging someone to behave unlawfully. So she was posting a Facebook comment about a protest and this was incitement. So it was unlawful behavior or urging someone to behave unlawfully. So again, protesting. Okay. I'm not familiar with the full extent of Australia's freedom of speech compared to America's freedom of speech and the, you know, the wording that protects us from being able to take that away. But again, now we're seeing a different situation of judgment, but here in America, we have not seen people arrested for Facebook posts yet. Again, I have another beef with that. Again, stuff like that. But Facebook was something new. You know, it wasn't around for four generations or t even t three, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I was there at the birth or at the introduction of like 
DSLR, you know. And so, like, yeah, to me, watching, like, the internet, just watching even, like, phones, cell phones, uh, Walkmans to Discmans to... God, what was the little Sony one? I bought the Sony one, and then they came out with the iPod, and I was like, idiot, idiot. In the Zoom, you know, like there's been so many little things, and then you're like, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh man, iPhone changed everything. It's like the light bulb. Before we had this, we had cords on phones. The Jolly were phones, you know. It's like I become that old man who's like, you kids don't know how good you got it. But as far as just being detained in Australia as an Australian for posting something on Facebook regarding setting up a protest and then to being told that this is urging someone to behave unlawfully Just again Australian people people of Australia understand that we're just trying to get over this you know we're not trying to screw you over we're just all as a people of the world just trying to get this behind us and you're just like the last mass nation that I don't know like it could have been better for you you're like the children of the world who are suffering from the inappropriate handling of your elder nations like behaviors and actions so again from the people of America and somebody who is you know, representative of all the people of the world, just please, your frustration and anger and concerns are valid. But again, if you just kind of step back and take a breath and just, you know, listen to what I'm saying, then I would hope that you post a comment and just tell me if it changes anything or eases anything or induces more incitement. <laughs> Just put your phone down. Can you, General like, record this? Like, in my pajamas, What's I this? have an ultrasound in yeah, an in front of the Yeah, kids, so she's pregnant. This, is, this leader like of an anti-lockdown group, group, also arrested for incitement, has now been in jail for three weeks. This You're under arrest cool. for incitement? You guys been following me? Police helicopters look for lockdown violators, like these folks trying to enjoy an evening on a rooftop. And the government has fired rubber bullets and tear gas at anti-lockdown protesters, including children. J this is another thing that I was always wondering why we don't have this in America. Why are, why were law enforcement when we were going through this problem of just like these shootings, why weren't they interested in maybe trying out you know they went to tasers it's just like non-lethal but what about yeah rubber bullets like granted yeah if you went point blank like right in front of their face and shoot, yeah but I mean like in a lot of these situations where they're shooting you know destitute citizens that are of a particular tribe supposed you know like just the, and then this critical race theory it's just we are all part of a grand experiment and in order for the grand experiment to continue we have to put a hold on this but we as americans i mean this technology of just like uh like what heat scanning like they uh, i see a lot of drones flying around here and you know i'm just like are those aliens because i can't wait for the day that, like i see like that happen but again i was like who are what, what are these things like there was news about how like there's been reports of mysterious drones flying and the government has no tie according to them and so if you see these drones, please call the police and report it. And I was just like, oh, what, what is going on? So that was kind of a sign where I was like, but now that I see this, it's just like, you know, like if you don't think that they have 
been doing this to us before, like we've seen these drones, then I would feel pretty naive at this age at least. But again, America, not to scare you, but this is probably already happened. Facial recognition, all that stuff. I didn't even think about it, but again, I'm not worried. I got nothing to be scared of if all of a sudden they're just like, we're gonna check your phones, everybody's phones. We're gonna look at all your search history just for whatever reason. I'm not worried about that because yeah, I got some stuff that may be whatever, but hey, in this world that I live in, you know, it's not like it's an excuse, but you know, it's pretty much everybody else's explanation for anything else. So like, yeah, like, but again, I, out of all those things, it's like nothing I'm like worried about. But people who are just like, this is crazy. Like, what's going on? It's like, these people I'm just like getting a weird energy from. Where it's just like, what are you worried about being like found out about? You know, like that's where it is at this point. James Allen, Garrick yes, Professor of Law at the University of Queensland, calls it heavy-handed despotism. It's been appalling in Australia, and I say that it was a big fan of Australia. I'm Canadian, you can tell from the accent. What is the definition of despotism? Here's the definition of despotism. The exercise of absolute power, especially in a cruel and oppressive way. I mean, so when they say, like, it's becoming a police state, like, who, you know, like, I read that it was, like, the prime minister or the bishop or something like that, the leader of Australia's, you know, the absolute power system fell from COVID. So then this was, like, a huge thing. Like, here is the monarch or leader of our nation, and they just got taken out from COVID. That's like the queen being taken out from COVID. Like, that should be a different level of seriousness. You know, if Trump died of COVID, like a lot of people probably would be a lot happier. But again, it would be a lot different in America where it would have been like, hey, it's a little more serious than just like, we're going to let you just try to figure it out or maybe go down this route. But again, because of who was infected how, and all that stuff. These are the events that led up to all of this, including the way we were behaving when they try to just let us keep our freedom of speech and protest and trusted us to have the light to do it peacefully and effectively. And you see what we did. So again, as an American representative, we are sorry, Australia. Like, forgive us and just get the shot and you'll get a lollipop and we can go have fun again, if that makes sense. Like, um, But it's come as a real shock to me how conservative friends are perfectly happy to go along with this. Australia consists of six states and two territories, each with their own COVID restrictions. Under a new home quarantine plan for international travelers, if you don't send the government your photo and location when it sends you a text, the police will come to your door. Melbourne pastor Paul Furlong has been arrested three times and placed in solitary confinement for opening his church during the lockdowns. The reason I did was for what I believe was a, a greater law, and that was to obey the word of God. And so... Uh, I had to choose God's law over man's law. This church in Sydney shown before the... So he said he had to choose God's law over man's law. So what is God's law? Where does God say, hey, if there's a global pandemic where everybody is being told to just stay at home, work from home, if you get a text message from us, just let us know where you are. It's just like a concerned parent. Like, 
again, I've never been to Australia. I would love to go. Um, but if I'm putting this in an empathetic scenario, like they're just trying to be that concerned parent. So these conservatives who are just right on board, again, these are probably the people who are the ones sitting here watching an argument about how two plus two equals five and the other side's like, no, two plus two isn't five. You're wrong. And it's just like, both of you are wrong. <laughs> like two plus two is four. You know, just what is all this for? Lockdown was rated and fined for holding what authorities called an illegal service and for not scanning people's phones before they entered. Some pastors are now concerned that the government could require a vaccine passport before entering a church. Now again, these churches, uh, you know, like, there was a case study. I don't know if people in Australia heard of this, but uh, we have a very traditional Amish community here in, you know, one of our original colonies, Pennsylvania where I saw, you know, a, a story I hadn't seen anywhere else. Luckily, my buddy Joe, you know, was kind enough and, you know, diligent enough to find it and share it with me. And yeah, it, like changed my view. It's like, this is a very religious community, small, I don't know, I'm sure you guys know Amish people, but yeah, when COVID hit here and their whole community, caught it like all at once because of church because they all went to church and drank out of the same cup for communion from somebody who got infected which ended up infecting the entire community so here is like a small scale relation like example so now if you guys look at just the results of how they use their belief and their church separate from state, right? And take note of the reasons why they chose to just say, you know what, we're gonna handle this pandemic ourselves. Because if the way that the modern world is handling it is just, if you're sick, you are probably going to die and you're probably going to die alone or around other sick people because we can't let any family members see you. Even maybe if they get sick, then maybe that's it. But it's just like, they were like, no, you know, if I'm going to go, then I'm going to go where I'm surrounded by my family. And yeah, they said that they suffered a lot of loss in that, you know, maximum risk age. But those elders of their community got to pass on being surrounded by their loved ones and even in the comfort of a home. You know, like maybe that would bring like an eerie sense to a house. But again, the Amish people are a different kind of, you know, group. So when I watched this case and then they showed that after they all, you know, collectively pretty much got over it because they got it all at the same time. They all had the immunity. None of them got the booster. They all had this immunity. And ever since then, they haven't gone to that and their community economically and just economically has been thriving because all the other systems and like are just collapsing so i mean i'm not encouraging you to protest but you know like protesting doesn't have to be like i'm gonna draw up a sign and plan to go grab a bunch of people and run up to the capital of our nation to be heard it's just i hear you and let me tell you so you can hear me and at that point you know well then i protest the decision that i have to die in this hospital which is pretty much what the amish said they just said 
you know, we are going to use our right to be separate from church and state and use that to just take care of our dying and all that stuff since we've been doing that anyway. So it was like an interesting like premise and an interesting case study on, wow, okay. Now here's a question of, did we try to push this pandemic vaccine too fast? And maybe that was the domino that created all the pressure that exploded. But then in America, there was already pressure building up from racism. But then there's Americans who were just like, we relieve this pressure like years ago why is this bottle being opened up now so it's just again like a crazy new time we asked evan mulholland at australia's conservative think tank the institute of public affairs if he still considers australia a free country well it's a good question it's a question a lot of people across the political spectrum have been asking these things don't happen in a vacuum they happen when the political and cultural elites slowly take away our freedoms and they become normalized australians have also begun turning in one another to authorities east german style in this tweet an australian mother was desperate to find a way home with her son and needed to cross a state border violating lockdown <coughs> restrictions she was turned into police. With this kind of behavior, you might think many th Now this is what our systems are hoping we do, okay? So this is a good sign where it's just like, okay, at least the citizens are listening in this way. I don't know if these are the conservatives, but again, concerned that your son, like just be grateful that you're with your son and we have telephones and voice chats. There's no reason that you absolutely have to get across the border through all of this. So, yeah, like I said, sometimes when it's important just to be in the state of mind that's in the present moments, rather than just like hopping around from whatever memories feeding you from the past or whatever fear is you know, making you look at the future in whatever way that is making you just feel in the present moment like your rights are being taken away. It's just like, I don't think I heard, you know, your government say like, this is forever. It's just, you know, hey, look, you know, like, I don't do a good Australian, not one that's just, but you know, it's just, we're not saying you, these rights are gone. But temporarily, we need them to be forfeited. Either, you know, willingly, we did, maybe, I don't like I said, did they ask you to be in quarantine or was it just straight, you're in lockdown? Again, the word choice. So if it was just straight to lockdown, then I would advise the government to use a better word like quarantine or just you know, I don't know, just family time. Hey, it's work from home day. You know, like there's a positive word to use other than lockdown. Thousands of Australians have died from COVID, but the death toll is under 1,200 out of a nation of 25 million people, okay. or 0.0047% of the population. Almost three times that many Australians die every week from normal causes. But one poll showed most Australians favor living without freedom because they fear COVID more than any other Western nation. Now, the, the media has just scared people senseless. The average person thinks, if I catch this, I'm going to die. There have been several large and sometimes violent demonstrations against the lockdowns and against planned vaccine passports, and hundreds have been arrested. The government says the death toll would have been much worse without lockdowns and is saying now that life could The government says that has just scared people senseless. The average person thinks if I catch this, I'm going to die. There have been several large and sometimes violent demonstrations against the lockdowns and against planned vaccine passports and hundreds have been arrested. The government says the death toll would. I don't know, violent. The comparative to this, the protests that have 
ended up in violence here in America. Yeah, it's like watching kids, just like, oh, they think that that's like, you know, like there's people on horses. It's just like, you guys are doing it peacefully. So, you know, like as our children, I gotta be proud as a, an American parent. <laughs> but again, just like, as Americans, like what about this method of law enforcement? Hopefully we're gonna look at how we use law enforcement or even involve or reestablish law enforcement after this. But again, if we do have it, I highly suggest we look into Australia's riot control methods here, rubber bullets and like this foam, stuff like that. Like, yes, it's not like pepper spray where it's just gonna, it could be anybody, but hey, this foam, yeah. Look, we're telling you like, just do this. Like, why is it just, for like a week or something, like, and then if you're gonna get foam in the face, better than pepper spray, or you're gonna get shot by a rubber bullet, better than getting shot by seven American bullets, like in there. So like, again, no matter how. Sorry guys, that's the father. But again, just, I don't know, the sight of just the line, like, I don't know, like, that seems a little over dramatic, but again, if anybody's just wondering why Australia is just like going through this so, like, this, like, unjustly and just like, you know, violations of human rights. It's like, it's not violating human rights for the general public. Yeah, it may be infringing on some people's personal, like, accust, you know, acclimated rights to being a human, but if you in Australia still just like built up about this, just, Again, take a deep breath and just think like what has been going around all over the world, just trying different ways to handle this. And now, yeah, just I can see as a parent, like this is the only way, like we have to like spank you or we have to throw you in time out, you know? Yeah, no toys, no whatever, or what, you know, like it's just, Parenting, government style. And they're saying now that life can only return to normal when most of the country is vaccinated. They describe... Uh, now here is... Okay, let's... ...giving back our freedoms as some sort of a treat, as some sort of a reward, uh, something that can be given back to us and on our fundamental freedoms that we're... Is it a reward? I mean, yeah, in this situation, it's... If you're just gonna think like like it's a reward, then there is your sponsoring thought. You have become dark to the light that should have come with what the right to freedom of speech and all this means. You know, like who gave you those rights? The government, <laughs> you know, who were put in by the people. So like, yeah, if you wanna say it's a reward, yeah, the government says once all the kids get their shots, then everybody gets a lollipop and we all get to go to Disneyland. There's the reward. But if you don't, then you're just going to be in time out longer. So don't think of it like a child. Forgive us. You know, we're all imperfect, government officials especially, and government systems. But just, you know, the day the child realizes that all adults are imperfect, all these systems are imperfect, then we become adolescents. And when we, the adolescents, then become forgiving of that, then we are adults at a point where we can choose for ourselves what these rights are, like a reward, or if they're actually just self-evident rights that we all have. So.
stolen from us in the first place. The Australian stolen. journalist Clive James Anything once said the problem with Australians is not that so many of them are descended from convicts, but that so many are descended from prison officers. It's a quote that's being talked about a lot these days. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Now, don't think this can't cross an ocean and come to us, the uh, panic, if you will, over COVID-19 is, is certainly spreading. It definitely spread to New Zealand, uh, where someone was arrested literally for having KFC. KFC in the trunk was illegal. Like that, that part was like, oh, geez. <laughs> I love KFC. I love fast food. But again, during quarantine, it was like awesome because all those places like had no lines. Like honestly, I miss the times of quarantine because yeah, it was like living Bill Burr's scenario, like his fantasy scenario. Just like, do you know how awesome it would be if we could just get the population down to like 100,000 people or 300,000 people? It's like, that's what it felt like. Like, wow, like I didn't have to go to like, you know, uh, like an office 30 minute, but like, I was like, yeah, yeah, I've, traffic wasn't bad and rush hour wasn't this bad. Like, this is nice. But then if like, am I on the side of like, we need to wipe out like 80% of a population? No, but it's just like, I'm just trying to find the silver lining. And again, just if, you know, what he says is just a fear. Let's not fear it in America. Like, we just have to, again, hopefully learn from what I'm saying here to Australians. Like, we're the parents, so now we got to set a better example. You know, and then we're like the children of that old world. So, like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on us being like the middle bridge between the history of all the nations. So, I commented that, you know, I promise this will not happen. It will not come to America and start a panic like this. So I hope uh, those of you watching this video, um, reading the comment that I'm posting this under, um, and especially maybe people in Australia and Russell, I don't know, let me know what you think. Does this help? Does this explain? Does this calm you down? If not, let me know because I'm your chaplain. And as a chaplain, I'm here to listen to your grievances and frustrations and stuff like that and try to build a bridge to get us all back to center. So God bless you all. Thank you 700 Club and thank you Australians, people of the world for just at least making this far. Now we just all gotta get over the final hump and I promise you Greater days will be ahead of us once we get through this. So please share, please subscribe. God bless.